relatively brief conversation, but I'm really happy to have you all here as this kind of juncture between these two openings. I'm going to start out with a question for Sakwase. I'm hoping you could take us a bit through the genesis of your work, uh, how it gained its grounding, especially within the U.S., with the research on form, abstraction, and the material implications of those things, in particular for Black Americans. So, f fundamentally, I'm thinking about architecture and infrastructure, specifically as it pertains to people ha who have survived the catastrophe of the transatlantic slave trade. And in the surviving that transatlantic slave trade, there's architecture and infrastructure that sort of multiply the sort of violence of that history. And so my work is focused on how people move through those spaces and um, self-liberate through those spaces of architecture and infrastructures of violence. So the forms are essentially an extraction of stories and histories of self-liberators. So I'll take a site where someone self-liberated or a ship or a house where someone self-liberated and I'll take those forms and then I will um, abstract those forms into something that speaks of ideas of scale and movement. So I'm a child of the migration, so I'm specifically really interested in multi-scalar movement as a human right. Okay, I'm moving on to Ikibari Kuru. The material of these sculptures comes from a very particular place. Can you talk about your history of working with this place and how this has developed into the current manifestations of the monuments? So, 이두 장소에 가면 오히려 어, 서울이란 도시에 대해서 생각을 많이 하게 됩니다. 어, 성남은 서울에서 밀려난 사람들이 거주했던 그런 도시고요. 마석가구 단지는 어, 이주고 노동자들이 주로 살고 있고 지금 재개발 때문에 오히려 그곳은 서울화 되기 위해서 준비 중인 곳이라고 할수 있죠. 어, 이 땅탑에는 여러 가지 의미가 있는데요. 예를 들어서 지금의 한국의 부동산이나 땅에 대한 위령탑 이런 의미도 있을 거고 그 다음에 이 재개발되고 있는 장소에 대한 기념비일 수도 있는 거고요. 그 다음에 이흙 본연의 것, 흙이나 땅의 본연의 어떤 증물적인 기념비라고도 할수 있습니다. So moving on from my original question to you, um, I'm hoping we can talk about how your work has taken on the form now of not only being rooted in the U.S. and particular struggles there, but transnationally, so that you have begun to do these exchanges with projects overseas, including this one, which we've just seen some of the culmination of. So maybe you could talk about how you've been able to do that kind of movement and say co-situated struggle. So, I belong to the distance started as a question around movement, migration, forced migration, um, different or, or understanding different registers of movement and distance between, depending on the geography and the political history. So, I needed a structure in which to think about um, both local histories and global histories. So what I did is I used the forms that were already sort of in my practice from those liberation spaces, and I used them to think about 
other kinds of forms that talked about distance, that talked about through ways, that talked about scale, that talked about enclosures, that talked about ways in which people deal with infrastructure and architecture, ways in which they refuse it, ways in which they find it, and ways in which they build it um, themselves. And even though I don't believe in the universal, I do understand colonization, invasion, dispossession, racial capitalism, global capitalism as things that need infrastructure and architectures to exist, right? So, and my work is, you know, foundationally sort of inspired by the research of a specific geography, right? So I can listen and, and witness and take on different kinds of histories and use a form that absorbs all of that history while at the same time not minimizing it, um, takes on the poetry of human geography, no matter the space, while, while not minimizing it, and also um, making forms that can tend to sorrow, but also tend to real agency around resistance and refusal and um, taking one's own life in one's hands um, to be free. Well, I was gonna say, since you ended on the, the idea of being free, I wanted to ask you about planning freedom and this idea, or this proposition within that of, of the idea of planning freedom through this this assembly through this work um, and what you're proposing there. So part of the project in Seoul was to work with Yin Jin and Yin Yang, right? And to, for months, exchange histories of Korea, histories of their own specific responses to South Korea and North Korea, what has happened. So the ability to really research alongside dancers allowed um, this sort of um, a resonance around freedom, right? And unkeeping dispossession. So Kuji Jakalia really was inspired by my collaborators in Seoul because um, I think fundamentally that we talked about freedom and self-determination. So reading Korean poets, visiting the DMZ, thinking about north and south of the river, understanding the, the huge footprint of American military here, and really getting closer um, to the ways in which people liber self-liberate here. I wanted to bring that into um, collage work. And I think collage work is able to talk about the intersection of architecture, infrastructure, movement, geography, um, so I wanted to, the poetics from, you know, so I wanted to allow it into the work and to work on site and to really respond pretty immediately to the research and my own embodied experiences. Uh, moving back on, on the idea of infrastructures, uh, I want to ask you to develop more and say a bit more about your work on real estate, for one and also the site specificity of this work here at the Sema Courtyard. So two questions in one. 네, 그두 가지 질문에 한 번에 대답하도록 할게요. 저희 바깥에 있는 땅탑이 총 일곱 개가 있는데요. 그 중에 나지막한 정사각형 모양의 땅탑은 한평 규모입니다. 음, 평이라는 것은 한국에서 주로 토지나 건물의 규모를 나타낼 때 쓰는 단위잖아요. 그저 땅이라는 게 사실 어디에 위치해 있느냐에 따라 그 가치와 가격이 매져, 매, 매겨지게 되는데 실상 저희는 없는 돈으로 땅을 사고 그리고 땅을 밟지 않은 채로 건물 위에 살아가잖아요. 이러한 것이 서울에는 과밀화가 되고 그것이 이제 서울 외곽으로 이제 부동산 개발이 확대가 되면서 공단들이 이제 있었던 위성 도시나 그리고 수도권 도시 같은 경우에 노동자들은 삶의 터를 잃게 되고 자연스럽게 그들의 공동체는 해체가 되었습니다. 그렇게 삶의 터전을 잃는 건 사람들뿐만 아니라 나무들은 베이거나 뽑히기도 하는데요. 그래서 저희는 이 작업을 이 작업에서 
그러한 공동체와 나무를 연결했던 흙을 도심 속의 낯선 공간에 옮겨왔고요. 그리고 이 전시가 끝나면 이 흙들은 또 어디론가 가게 될 것입니다. Do you want to talk about that location? Or is it undisclosed? 비밀입니다. It's a secret. <웃음> So, Rupa, so you began to speak about this particular collaboration that led to the performance we just saw. I wanted to ask you uh, more generally about your ethic and kind of mode towards collaborating with performers. So I understand architecture and infrastructure to be a part of world building. And what's so fantastic about working with um, dancers or people who are invested in movement is they think about the world in relationship to this really quotidian moment, you know, of the body. And then they think of it, they can expand that thinking into something, um, you know, phenomenal. So I'm interested in work that invites movement and where movement artists can move from the phenomenal to the quotidian and back and forth. So this particular piece um, was really fascinating to me because I have no real say in what the dancers are, what the choreography is. So because my work comes out of a, also a deep practice of meditation, I understand that it's filled, right, when people come and interact and engage in it and embody it but it also empties out um, when the human sort of goes away. So what does it mean to, you know, create a place out of space? And then what does it mean to, when people are not interacting with it and not um, embodying it, to just sort of witness it from a distance? So I'm interested in that being a part of, you know, how do we think about perception, right? How do we think about movement? But also how do we um, understand um, that meandering, right, and improvisation, and lingering, and movement, and so the freedom to uh, move one's body in the space can really, uh, those rights can be taken away, right, and movement, people who are interested and invested and have a fidelity to movement have a sort of agency and freedom in their body, so I just sort of let, let that happen. You're reminding me about this quote from, Ad from Adrian Piper about lurking in the art world, the idea of lingering and hanging. I have a similar question um, to close out the conversation with the three of you um, to ask you more about elements of sound, performance, liveness, and engagement throughout your work as it's a critical elements in, in it always manifests differently in each iteration. Maybe we can talk about it a little bit here and also in maybe some past and future ways. Uh, 우선 사운드 작업은 최태현이라는 음악가가 만들었습니다. 어, 저희는 땅을 밟는 것, 다지는 것, 땅을 두드리는 소리에 대해서 이야기를 나누었고요. 그것은 이제 사운드의 땅과 개발이라는 어떤 해석이 포함되어 있습니다. 그리고 퍼포먼스에 대해서 이야기한다면 어, 저희는 처음 저희의 노동을 함께 나누면 어떨까 생각했었습니다. 어, 공개하는 퍼포먼스는 작업의 마지막 과정을 관객들과 함께 하는 것입니다. 어, 그리고 더 의미 있었던 어떤 행위들이 있었다면 사실은 저 땅탑을 제작하는 과정에서 발생하는 행위들이었는데요. 뭐 예를 들면 다 같이 저 땅탑 위에 올라가서 흙을 다지기 위해 발을 굴리거나 혹은 평을 맞추려고 머리를 조아리거나 혹은 마당 저 미술관 앞마당을 빗자루로 쓸어내리는 그런 행위들은 사실 어쩌면 저희 퍼포먼스의 일부라고도 볼수 있을 것 같습니다. 어, 이러한 행위들은 단순히 작업물을 만들어내는 과정이어서 중요한 게 아니라 함께한 경험, 즉 공동의 경험이기 때문에 저희에겐 중요한 부분이라고 생각합니다. 그래서 오늘 이 퍼포먼스에서 이런 마지막 과정을 여기 오신 분들과 함께 나눌 수 있게 돼서 되게 기쁘게 생각합니다. 네. Thank you. And as a last bit of promotion, I'll mention that there will be a series of workshops coming up in October for those who would like to make their own possible monoliths with some of the same dirt. 감사합니다.